Hey everyone, it's Rihanna and welcome to part three of my DVD collection. This is the third shelf on my DVD case and then we still gotta do the shelves. I have a lot of DVDs to get through so let's get started. Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist is incredibly underrated starring Kat Dennings and Michael Sarah. Absolutely love this film, it's super super feel good and has an amazing soundtrack. Obvious Child is an extremely unapologetic comedy. Jenny Slate is amazing in the lead role. I don't understand how this film didn't get more recognition. It's absolutely hilarious. Guillermo del Toro plus Kaiju and Robot Fights equals epic. The Perks of Being a Wallflower is the perfect coming of age story. It changed my life forever and Logan Lerman is amazing in the lead role. Such a game changer. I need to keep these in order. If you didn't have a crush on Jeremy Sumter as Peter Pan when this first came out, you're either lying or wrong. I absolutely love this rendition of Peter Pan. It's so magical and the score by James Newton Howard is incredible. Pan's Labyrinth is a gorgeous dark fantasy fairy tale directed by Guillermo del Toro. Oh my goodness, this film is incredible. The storytelling, the cinematography, the acting, it's just all around amazing. The Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, because no one really likes the fourth one because it was so bad. I was tempted to make an Akka joke out of this one but that would be really really cheesy and I just don't want to put myself through that. Pitch Perfect is one of my favourite films of all time and I will never be sick of watching it. The Prestige is a Nolan masterpiece, seriously so underrated from him. It's fantastic. Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale, Scarlett Johansson, the whole acting ensemble in this film is amazing. The twist at the end is amazing. Oh my goodness, mind blowing. My favourite period drama ever, the 2005 Pride and Prejudice starring Keira Knightley and Matthew McFadden. Joe Wright does a fantastic job with this film as with every other one of his period dramas apart from Anna Karenina which I can't find but is in my collection but who cares because Pride and Prejudice. I don't know if I need to say anything about Pulp Fiction because it's Pulp Fiction and if you don't love Pulp Fiction Mm. The Red Shoes, an absolutely gorgeous film from the 40s, one of my personal favourites and has a spectacular dance sequence that goes on for 15 minutes and you just can't stop watching it. I own a lot of Guilty Pleasure Hilary Duff movies. This is probably the worst one. The Baz Luhrmann, Romeo and Juliet. I absolutely love the modern setting with the Shakespearean dialogue. I think it works really, really well. Plus the soundtrack is amazing. The Santa Claus starring Tim Allen, childhood favourite Christmas film right here. We are a sex for bomb and we're here to make you think about death and get sad and stuff. The most underrated adaptive films ever directed by Edgar Wright. It's absolutely amazing. Seven. Oh my lord. Seven. David Fincher. Masterpiece. Yes. Turn the right corner in Sin City and you can find anything. Visually and story-wise, this film is absolutely perfect. Secret Life of Walter Mitty, amazing cinematography, and a really feel-good film. I don't get the hate. Shaun of the Dead is arguably the best zombie apocalypse film ever. You can try and fight me. Just try. Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. I don't know why I don't own the first one. That makes no sense. I still haven't even seen this. Shutter Island still gives me chills every single time I watch it. The twist is fantastic, and Martin Scorsese is just... Uh, the genius. You can say what you want about Amanda Bynes, but She's the Man is a cinematic masterpiece. I hope my sarcasm came through, but genuinely this film is pretty funny. Sleepy Hollow, because who doesn't love a bit of Tim Burton and Johnny Depp action? Wait a second, they've done practically every film together. Well, at least the cinematography is good. I can always rely on Emmanuel Busky for that. I genuinely find this film creepy, like really creepy. And Christopher Walken as the Headless Huntsman, Yes. Sorry, my Prada's at the cleaners with my new hoodie. My fuck you flip flops, you pretentious douchebag. I cannot do an American accent. I'm so sorry, but that quote from this film is amazing. Also, this film in general, amazing script from Aaron Sorkin and David Fincher. It's perfect. Stardust, an incredibly underrated fantasy comedy directed by Matthew Vaughn. I think it's genius. I love it. I watch it all the time. It's amazing. I don't know if I can talk about Star Wars without getting very, very excited or very, very emotional because it's, it's Star Wars and it's, it's Star Wars. This is the original trilogy, by the way, guys. I do have the prequels, but I don't know if I should show them to you. Although I did rewatch them recently and they aren't that bad. Attack of the Clones is the rest of them aren't. But oh my god, Star Wars is perfect, okay? Star Wars is precious and perfect. I own a lot of guilty pleasure chick flick sports movies. I don't get the hate for Super 8. I really, really enjoyed this film and J.J. Abrams is just... I, I'm just going back to Star Wars. Superbad is one of the best comedies ever made and this trio of characters is just winning altogether. Can they please make a sequel? Because who doesn't love a bit of Johnny Depp and Tim Burton action? Wait a second, I've already said that. Seriously, they've done every single movie together. No joke though, I really, really enjoy Sweeney Todd. It's creepy, it's musical, and who doesn't love a bit of that? One of my favorite Disney movies ever. I love the songs, never get sick of watching it. I just, 
Uh, tangles. Thelma and Louise, directed by Ridley Scott with amazing performances from both Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Absolutely love this film. We've waited 84 years for the sequel to this. Seriously, 84 years. But you know, I really, really like Adventures of Tintin. We, I own it, so. Tree of Life, directed by Terence Malick. I have not seen this yet and I've had it for a few years now. Yeah. I don't know if I should admit to owning these. I really don't know if I should. It's a bit late now. I kind of want to burn these a little bit. Oh my god, pass Rihanna, why would you do this? Literally one of the quotes says breathtaking. Breathtaking because it was so damn bad. A series of unfortunate events, a film with endless potential, but it was way too crammed into one film. Jim Carrey was really well casted in this film. I enjoy it and I cannot wait for the Netflix series, guys. I'm so excited. First five minutes of this film will break your heart and the rest of it will put it back together. V for Vendetta is dystopian done right. Amazing performances from both Hugo Weaving and Natalie Portman. This film has some of the best fight sequences I have ever seen. Oh my God. Wayne's World changed cinema. I can't count the amount of times I've recreated the scene where they sing Bohemian Rhapsody in the car in this film. I really just, I still do it now. West Side Story, kind of boring, but the musical numbers are really good. I told you I own a lot of Guilty Pleasure chick flicks, but this one's genuinely funny, I promise. Thank you, Matthew Vaughn, for saving us from Last Stand. It was, it was a traumatic time and X-Men First Class just, it gave me new hope. X-Men Days of Future Past saw the return of original X-Men director Brian Singer. This film is so, so good. Like, so good. I'm so psyched for Apocalypse. It's ridiculous, but it's gonna be really hard to beat Days of Future Past because, ah. Why She Mama Tambien, a Mexican film directed by Alfonso Cuaron, is a really good road trip movie with fantastic dialogue and really good characters. I know earlier I said that Shaun of the Dead was the best Zomcom, but Zombieland comes so, so close. I love this film. It's so good. Plus Bill Murray. Oh my God, Bill Murray. 10 Things I Hate About You is my favourite 90s comedy. I will never be sick of watching this. It's so, so good. So funny. Amazing. 21 Jump Street. I like this one more than 22 Jump Street, purely for that scene where Dave Franco talks about getting friendship bracelets and Taco Bell. 5050 starring Seth Rogen and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, a drama comedy, one of my personal favourites. I really, really like this film. 300 directed by Zack Schneider. Great visuals in this film. Not too interesting. I've only seen it a couple of times, but the visuals are great. And the last one is 500 Days of Summer starring Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel. The original screenplay is fantastic. I love what they did with this film with the styling, with the directing, it's art, uh, just never gets old. It's genuinely genius. So that completes our view of my DVD case. There are a few odds and bods DVDs which I will show when we get onto the shelf. That's coming soon guys, so watch this space. So tell me what you thought of the films I showed in this video down below in the comments and if you like it please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already please subscribe to my channel, I'll be doing another one or maybe two videos of these in the near future, also movie reviews and TV reviews. As always thank you guys so much for watching, that's all I have for you today, bye!